daughter recently showed me this lovely drawing she'd made of a Ruru owl and a monarch butterfly. Um, at the time, it was an even weighted pencil line drawing. And in the upper right hand corner, there was a very large monarch. In the middle uh, was the owl. And she brought it to me and asked me if I thought it, it was weird that the monarch was bigger than the owl. And my response was that sometimes artists use size to convey different messages. Um, so it wasn't necessarily weird that the monarch was bigger than the, than the owl um, and that she could play with the idea of using different scales to draw attention to different objects. Uh, she wasn't happy with this answer. <laughs> so we talked some more about it and, and I told her um, of some ways that she could um, keep the butterfly as large, have the owl as big as it was, and still make visual sense uh, a realistic visual sense in her drawing. So we talked about incorporating things like um, overlap, objects that overlap, the object that's in front appears closer, and the object that's behind appears further away. Um, we talked about loss of detail at a distance. So if an object is very close to you, it can have lots of detail, and that tells the viewer that Hey, it's close enough that you can see the detail and you can put an object in your background that has very little detail and that tells the viewer hey that that's far away I can't, I can't make out all the detail um, and the same goes for color so color will be very vibrant um, in, in the foreground of, of your artwork if you want it to appear close and it can be um, kind of muted and a lighter value as you receive back in visual space. She was much happier with this response and she took what she learned and she went back and, and she completed her, her piece of artwork which ended up being a beautiful little ink drawing um, of this monarch and the Ruru. Um, she incorporated overlap by adding another very tiny um, butterfly behind the owl. She added more detail to the monarch in the foreground. And she made the, the lines of the monarch in the foreground much darker than those of the lines of, of the Ruru that was kind of now in the middle ground between the very large butterfly and the very tiny butterfly. But, we're here to talk about kind of taking size and proportion and scale and distorting them. So, what if she decided to, you know, keep the weirdness of her original art and decided to make a piece of artwork where the butterfly and the owl are the same size? You know, what would it be like if um, the butterfly was as big as, as the owl or the other way around. What if the owl was shrunken down to the size of the butterfly? What sort of techniques could you use to let your viewer know that, no, this isn't a butterfly that's close to me and an owl that's far away. These are things that I, the artist, have done to distort the picture to make you think about um, having different scales in the same piece of artwork. So let's look at that a little bit. So I will begin this problem of thinking of proportion and scale the same way that I begin any art project. Um, and that will be with making tiny little thumbnail sketches. Um, these will be very quick sketches, things that I don't expect anyone else to understand. It's a way for me to get 
ideas out of my head and onto paper. So as I, I began thinking about proportion and scale, um, one of the things that I considered was Clifford the Big Red Dog, um, which are children's books about a giant red dog. Um, it just so happens I have a giant dog, and I often joke that he's the size of a pony. So with this idea of the dog being the size of a pony, I take the dog outside and do some reference photos with him. Um, and I come back inside with my reference pictures and my little model doll there, and I begin doing some quick sketches of, you know, what what's it going to look like if my dog really is as big as a horse and there's a person riding on this on this dog. And I get to where I'm almost satisfied and I keep going and I decide to make um, kind of a final sketch. And in my final sketch, I start thinking about the fact that I really want my viewer to know that this is not a tiny person on a dog. This is a giant dog. So from my sketches to my final sketch, I make sure that my dog is um, very prominent and large. So you can see here that from the sketch to the finished sketch, um, the dog's head gets a lot bigger and comes forward um, in the, the viewing plane a little bit. One of the first things that I'm going to do to give, start to give my viewers a clue of the dog's size is with the line drawing. So uh, in the line drawing, I use heavier lines in the foreground and I'll use thinner lines as um, the, the dog recedes into the background. And I'll use very thin lines um, for the background of the piece. Now, I've decided to color this uh, little drawing on the computer so that we can actually look and see at different color options and how color and value really change the scale of this drawing without having to make a million different little drawings. So in this beginning um, rendering, the dog is on a flat field, basically. Yeah, there's little bumps in the field. But if you look at it, it could just be, you know, the dog park with a little mud puddle over there in the background. Um, there's not really very much of a sense of space. In the beginning, the woman's shirt and the um, dog's legs are pretty much in the same viewing field. That white is very bright and comes right out to the forefront of the picture. Now, in an effort to make this dog as large as possible, I'm going to add a colored shirt onto the woman and she's going to fall back a little bit um, in the in the, the depth of field there. Um, she's going to recede into the background just a little bit, but she's still going to be bright enough that we'll know that she's not part of the background. She's still, she's still uh, firmly placed in the middle ground. Now look what happens as we begin to add a little bit of detail into the foreground by shading the grass in front of the dog. We begin to get a little bit of a sense of depth in the ground. Now this is greatly increased when we add some atmospheric perspective to the hills in the background. So as we go back in space, um, the hills get lighter in um, color. Now I'm going to use a little bit of an overlap trick here. I'm going to create a frame around the drawing and the dog is actually going to pop right out of the frame. So he's, 
He's literally jumping out of the picture. It's looking very big at this point. Now, to finish up my drawing, I'm just going to do a little bit of color changes so that I get more of a feel of what I'm looking for. Um, I kind of wanted like a, an old rodeo poster feel um, to the finished drawing. And the, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, a layer over the top that, that actually mutes the background a little bit. So it further sends the, the background towards the back. It really brings the front of the dog forward and it keeps my woman right there in the middle ground where I want her to be. So we've gone from what could be a tiny human on a dog to clearly this giant creature running through um, a landscape with a human riding him. So say what you want to about size. Use overlap, amount of detail, line weight, and color to visually articulate the scale and proportion you want.